Hey everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Lewis and in this channel I'll be talking about the most common issues and problems that I've seen in the past two years working as a programming bootcamp instructor. So before we dive straight into today's topic, let me talk a little bit about my background. From 2015 to 2019 I worked at Google where I left as a senior software engineer on a security and machine learning team. After that, I worked at two boot camps, one in Istanbul and one in Moscow. And during that time, I've taught both students who had no previous programming knowledge, but also students who were somewhere in the middle of their careers. You know, let's say anywhere from one to four years of working already. So with that, I think that this channel is a little different because for the most part, I'm actually not talking about my insights in my personal career, but my insights as a teacher, having worked with hundreds of students over the years, seeing them go from no programming knowledge to junior developers, and even hiring some of them to work at my own startup. So I think that I have a pretty well-rounded perspective on, let's say, the educational process of programming. So with that out of the way, let's dive straight into today's topic, which is the very important question, which is probably in the top three most common questions that I'm asked. And that question is, do I need to know algorithms to be a programmer? So the answer to this question is a bit nuanced. And for that reason, I'll actually be dividing my answer into some more detailed sub questions of which you can find the timestamps below if you want to skip to a specific answer. So. Let's first ask ourselves this question a slightly different way. Do I absolutely need to know algorithms to be a programmer? And the answer to this question is actually no. You might have heard this elsewhere, but I'll reiterate that I would guess, again, I'm making up numbers here, let's say 90 to 95% of programming jobs do not require algorithms at all, okay? Yes, they do exist, but if we're speaking statistically, you don't need to use it for most work. And during my time at Google over four years, if I'm talking specifically about some algorithm, let's say like, oh, you know, like a binary tree or a red black tree or, you know, some fancy word for some technique, probably two times maximum over four years. I personally used it, okay? But I can tell you that I've had students and I know many people who become very successful programmers at their companies. You can be a senior engineer, a senior programmer, without pretty much any knowledge of algorithms except maybe the very basics. So that is to say, we don't directly use algorithms often in you know most of the work that programmers do. Again, I'm qualifying this because yes, they do exist, but the truth is you know, most front-end programmers, most back-end programmers, you don't need to know anything fancy. You don't need to be doing crazy algorithms in your daily work. Most of it is just going to be programming fundamentals. But Speaking of programming fundamentals, this leads me to the second question that you know I want to frame this topic in. And that question is, does it make you a better programmer to know algorithms? And the answer to this question for me is yes. And let me explain why. So for me, algorithms, you know, first I'll speak abstractly. Algorithms is essentially a test or a way to challenge our general knowledge of programming. So the way that I view algorithms is that algorithms, you know, these types of problems are testing how we can pass data from one place to another using certain tools, you know, hash tables, lists, dictionaries, right? But most algorithm problems in the end, you know, are some type of manipulation of data. However, when I phrase it that way, it's interesting because to me, programming work in general, whether it's front end, back end, or machine learning, is also manipulation of data. That is, we're taking variables, you know, which store data from one place to another, we're using for loops, we're using if conditions, we're using some type of construct to manipulate this data, right? So here you start to see the overlap, is that algorithms are kind of a test of the logical way, uh, and you know, certain techniques, specific techniques, of course, to move data from one place to another, and you know, perhaps taking into consideration efficiency and so on. So that being said, going from abstract to concrete, in my personal experience, I've definitely run into problems with students who have work experience, and also students that I've hired myself, where I see them run into problems and I think, hmm, you know, if this person 
had practiced algorithms, right? Essentially had more experience or more background in algorithms, which tests our fundamental use of for loops, our ability to use if conditions and so on as tools, then probably they would be able to solve this problem faster or they wouldn't run into this issue, right? So to summarize all of what I'm saying is that practicing algorithms is a way to sharpen your programming fundamentals. Because if you look at the solutions for algorithm problems, a lot of them, you know, they're composed of things that are familiar to you. You know, again, I keep talking about these basic constructs, for loops, lists, dictionaries, you know, and so on, if conditions, right? But it's about how you use them and it's about how you think about using them in the end, which applies still to our programming life. Even if we're not directly using, you know, hacking together some fancy algorithm with a fancy name, having that fundamental of using these instruments of programming correctly or you know quickly and efficiently is something that practicing algorithm problems will help you and that's you know why in my opinion it does make you a better programmer to learn some algorithms so this goes to my third question from a teaching perspective do i recommend people learn algorithms and again the answer to this question is yes but it's a little nuanced right I don't think that people who just started programming, you know, you've never worked, you've never created even a small app or, you know, solved a small problem before, just start off with algorithms. I don't think that makes sense, right? You want, again, there's one level of fundamentals, which is, you know, the basic constructs of programming, you know, all these things I mentioned before. And there's the next level, which is using them to solve algorithms, kind of training your mind to solve those problems. So just like I mentioned in the previous problem, I believe that it does make you a better programmer. It does teach you to use these instruments in a better way if you do learn and practice algorithms. You know, you don't have to be a crazy algorithm whiz or anything like this, doing like 3,000 leak codes or doing, you know, the hardest level of leak code in 10 seconds, right? But I do recommend that everybody spend some time to study algorithms, right? Um, and so actually, again, if we delve deeper into this, I'm going to talk about the last question, which is again, one that I receive very often. So if you want to work at FANG, so FANG is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, do I need to know algorithms? And again, reflective of my personal experience in your actual job, again, depending on your team, maybe there are some teams that are not like this, but you don't need them for the work directly. But if you want to get into the company, the answer to this question is yes. You absolutely need to know algorithms because that's simply how the system works. Whether you agree with it or not, you know, in Silicon Valley, not just in these big companies, it's quite common for these interview questions to be algorithm based, right? And in order to pass this interview and having interviewed, you know, a handful of people at Google myself, I can say that you do need to have studied these algorithms and you do need to be comfortable coding with them and explaining your thought process when you code them, right? It's not as simple as, oh, I see a problem, you know, I'm going to pick an algorithm. Okay, there's the solution, right? In these interviews, which is beyond the scope of this video, but covered, I think, quite well by other videos in YouTube, you have to explain your thought process, you know, while you're doing these interviews. So again, this is a question I've received very commonly because, you know, it's many people's dream to work at FANG, right? And the direct answer to this question is, if you want to work there, you do need to study your algorithms. So there's one last topic that I want to talk about, which is how exactly you study algorithms, right? Like, let's say I'm a student. I'm a junior programmer. I have some type of education, maybe from university, maybe from a programming bootcamp, but I've never studied algorithms before. How can I get started? So what I'll say is that there's a lot of resources out there these days, right? Um, you know, I think a lot of YouTubers, I'm not super familiar with them, but have made their own tools or their own sites to study these. And as far as I know, there's even some drama around them, right? But uh, the most important thing actually that I'm going to tell and I tell all my students is that the thing stopping most people from studying algorithms is actually not any type of mathematical background. It's not you know, any type of fundamental lack in their mentality. It's an issue of discipline, right? So this is my advice to all those who 
want to study algorithms or you know want to get started studying algorithms is to set realistic goals for yourself now this goes for any skill so to be more precise what you should not do is you should not say something like every single day i'm gonna wake up and i'm gonna do three to five leak codes a day right because uh you know if you can do that if you think you have the discipline to do that all the power to you i don't okay and I would realistically say for most students, it would be something like this. I'll get up maybe twice a week and I'll make some time somewhere from one to two hours on that day to study algorithms, right? Or maybe a goal like I'll try to solve two leak code problems in a week, right? To me, to put it another way, if you've never learned algorithms before, you have these goals to work at FANG or you simply want to learn algorithms for the pleasure of the knowledge, then you should be thinking more in terms of one year or two year time span, right? Of course, again, if you have the discipline, sure, you can cram this knowledge in six months. But the thing is, achieving any goal, in my opinion, is you know the result of building good habits. Doing something, not necessarily every single day, but maybe a few times a week. Again, these numbers, I'm just throwing out there. It's going to dif differ for every person. But to sum up what I just said, my advice to you, if you're getting started learning algorithms, it's not specifically about what resource to use and so on, but it's to set realistic goals. Because I've seen so many students who have set the goal to learn algorithms and maybe they've simply lacked the discipline, right? Or they set their goals too high. So I hope that today I've imparted some useful information dissecting this topic of algorithms. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. To summarize everything I've said quickly, you don't need algorithms to have a successful programming career. You can have a great life. You can have a great programming career without ever being an expert on algorithms. Okay, you can be a happy person. But in my opinion, it does make you a better programmer to practice them, to practice this type of abstract thinking. Uh, and, you know, finally, if your goal is to work, you know, in Europe, Canada, US, or at one of these big companies, it would be quite useful to pass the interviews. But again, it's very dependent on your life situation and your goals. So with that being said, leave your comments below. Let me know if you have any other questions. And in some of the other videos, I'll continue to answer some of the most common questions that I've received as a teacher. Thank you very much.